already heard free putt-putt golf headed to Tallahassee's Midtown. And joining us now for all the details, we have Grant Dermott and Matt Thompson. Good morning here. I'm so excited about the free putt-putt golf. This is something we have been seeing this social media push for the past couple of weeks now, but it's finally here. We're starting today. Explain a little bit about, you know, why we're doing this here in the capital city. Well, we start today at 5 o'clock, and it's 25 companies that are coming together in Tallahassee to offer a free event for the community. I, I mean, I, I got asked a lot, is it a for a charity? I'm like, well, it's free for the community. So therefore, it's something that the community can come in, bring their family down, bring a friend down, and play free putt-putt golf for it. And if they want, they can even grab a beer while they're there. This is something going to be a lot of fun. I know a lot of people are going to be out there. So Graham, why was this something you wanted to be a part of, bringing this here to the capital city and, you know, seeing all these people take advantage. It's just good to be associated with big companies like NAI Talcor and Madison Social that are doing such good things for the community. This is, you know, you see it on Facebook, free putt-putt golf. And I was seeing invites. I'm like, is this real? <laughs> well, nothing's free anymore. Right. But this is something that's totally, totally free. I can't even imagine how much work had to go into it, and we're the ones who get to benefit from it. This is something going to be so special. What do you hope people take away from this? Well, I hope they, they take away that um, things that can come and go. Uh, for example, uh, there's a big push in town to do these pop-up experiences, whether it's mm -hmm. around art or whether it's around uh, putt-putt. And this was just something I'm like, you know what? I don't have all the bureaucracy of some other issues. And so therefore, we can just launch it and we can see how it goes for four days. And it's really exciting to be able to have something free for the community for, for this amount of time. And we're just a couple of hours away from the very first swing, I guess, here. Yes. And each day, kind of as we're going through the weekend, you have little different special events, different pushes. What can we expect with this lineup? So we kick off today at 5 o'clock and we run to 10 o'clock and we're, we're joining uh, with the Chamber for the Young Professional Arm Access Tallahassee. Uh, tomorrow is Leadership Tallahassee and we're inviting a bunch of businesses down to have lunch. So in, instead of just going to your, your normal place or eating at your desk, come on out and have putt, play putt-putt and eat. Uh, tomorrow evening we have a little bit of a happy hour thing and then Kids Focus is on Saturday from 10 to 2, uh, bounce houses, face painters, Nerf guns are going to be out there. It's going to be a ton of fun for kids. And then on Sunday, Tri-Eagle Sales is actually sponsoring a tournament at 2 o'clock. So you can come out with your putt-putt skills and you can win gift certificates from Madison Social, Cole Couture, and others. Wow, maybe practice today and then sign up for the tournament on Sunday so you can yes. get a couple of those practice wins in. This is something so phenomenal. We are so glad you guys put in all this hard work <laughs> to bring this here for us. All the details are going to be online at WTXL.TV. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you so Thank much. Really appreciate you. it. Yes, Stay sir. with us. We're back in just two minutes.
Morning. Thank you for waking up with us here on WTXL Sunrise on this Thursday morning. It is the 24th day of September 2015. I'm Kelly Bartoli in Ray City. Your high today, 84 degrees. It is 630 on the dot and coming up this half an hour, we are talking to a new company helping you make the most out of your time, plus all the details of a weekend run in Gaston County. Live interviews coming up in just a few minutes. First, though, we'll check out what's happening in the world right now. A stampede in Saudi Arabia has killed at least 300 10 people and left 450 others wounded. It happened during the ritual known as stoning the devil about two miles from Mecca. Hundreds have been killed in the past years during the same ceremony. Officials have now deployed 4,000 workers to help with the disaster. The ceremony was the scene of stampedes and hundreds of deaths in the 1980s and 90s. In 2006, a stampede there killed at least 363 people. Back here in the U.S., a very busy day for Pope Francis yesterday in Washington, D.C. He celebrated Mass for the first time in the U.S., also declaring Junipero Serra, an 18th century Hispanic missionary, a saint. This was also the first time a canonization ceremony has taken place on U.S. soil and the first time a Hispanic American has become a saint. Today, the Pope will address Congress for the first time and then travel to New York. The CEO of Volkswagen has turned in his resignation. Martin Winterkorn announced yesterday he is stepping down. That decision comes after U.S. regulators revealed the company cheated in emissions tests on about a half a million diesel vehicles. The automaker has admitted around 11 million VW and Audi vehicles worldwide showed similar emissions issues. Volkswagen now faces more than 30 lawsuits claiming their cars are less valuable because of the scandal. The automaker also says it will seek criminal charges in regards to the emissions tests, but it's not clear who or what Volkswagen is targeting. Turning now to your headlines from around the region this morning, a new independent audit details dangerous understaffing at Florida prisons. That report says Florida prisons are so chronically understaffed that an emergency should be declared. It found the lack of prison staff cost the state millions in overtime, falls below national standards, and exposes taxpayers to increased costs if there were murder, riot, or escape at any of these prisons. A department spokesman says the agency has pushed for more funding and is doing the best it can with what it has. Last week, Corrections Secretary Julie Jones told legislative committees her budget includes a request for 273 additional officers. Valdosta police have arrested the second suspect in an assault and robbery. 17-year-old William David Casey White facing several charges, including criminal damage to property, hijacking a motor vehicle, aggravated assault and armed robbery. He and a 16-year-old are accused of going up to a woman outside of her home and demanding money at gunpoint. Police also say they stole her car, which was found a short time later. White is being held at the Lowndes County Jail. Well, on Sunday, you may be able to look up into the sky and see something that hasn't been seen for more than 30 years. A supermoon will combine with a lunar eclipse this Sunday, and the Valdosta State University Observatory wants to help you catch a glimpse. They're going to be open Sunday from 9 p.m. until midnight. This is for all ages, and there is absolutely no cost. Just about 634 here. Max, explain a little bit about this super moon lunar eclipse. There's a lot going on. We have kind of a tight window when we can hopefully see it. What if I don't want to explain it, Kelly? We need what if you I'm to. just no, I don't want to. No, I'll explain <laughs> it. I'll explain a little bit about it. Uh, so we're talking about a super moon and that's what makes this a total lunar eclipse. The fact that the super moon passes as close as possible to the Earth, making it as big of a moon as possible. So the Earth will be in between this sun and the moon Sunday evening and it's going to be a super moon meaning it's a full large moon passing as close as possible to the earth uh, the next time we're going to be seeing a total lunar eclipse 2033 so hopefully the clouds will break up enough Sunday evening so we can get in on some of this action and see the lunar eclipse out there this will be happening at 10 11 at Sunday night uh, and it'll be peaking 
at 1047. So there's about an hour or so window to be able to see the uh, supermoon transition into a total lunar eclipse. Again, VSU offering free admission to their observatory. Very cool for sure. If you're in Valdosta, you'll definitely want to check that out. In Tallahassee, though, just look up to the night sky and you should be able to see that. So very exciting stuff here uh, heading into this upcoming weekend. Meanwhile, this morning, if we were trying to see any uh, moon or star action out there, we wouldn't be able to do so because we have the thick clouds. We're talking about a few of those showers stretching from the nature coastline up towards central Jefferson County and even on the east side of Wakulla. You can see near St. Mark's and Wakulla Springs getting in on some light to moderate showers. Tallahassee, you're in the clear for now. But all this action is going to slowly but surely push your way. In the capital city, maybe a light shower up uh, so up 319, uh, but other than that, remaining rather quiet. But you can see the shower is kind of starting to drift a little bit closer to your area. So by the top of the hour, I'm expecting a few of those light to moderate showers to be impacting your travel times out there. Back towards Seminole County, also seeing a few showers exit the region. Bainbridge is quieting down, but again, give it another two to three hours, and you're going to see all this energy start to lift your way back towards the tri-state region. It's all courtesy of a salt out frontal system kind of sticking around our area that's causing us to be rather soggy this morning. And if you're not getting wet, you're getting in on the clouds with temperatures in the low 70s. We're at the mid 70s right now in Tallahassee, but there's a north northeasterly breeze at five miles per hour, taking the edge off a little bit out there. Here's what the next several hours looks like. Temps in the 70s this morning with a few isolated showers around the region. By lunchtime, I think we're quieting down with numbers in the low 80s, but we'll bubble up a few more of those showers heading into this afternoon uh, with highs getting in into the mid to upper 80s and again a few of those hit and miss showers so keep those umbrellas on standby. Your seven day forecast coming up just before the end of the show. We'll talk more about those rain chances which will be increasing heading into next week. Kelly's back with a check on traffic. Hopefully things are A-OK -okay out there and hopefully you got more needed information on that total lunar eclipse coming up this Sunday evening. Yeah, looking forward to that one. But if you're heading out early on this Thursday morning, you may be running into some of these slick conditions or some showers that Max was mentioning. So certainly take it easy. You can kind of see along the big picture here what your route may look like as you are heading out the door early this morning. Now we haven't really had too many impacts, no local accidents being reported, so that is certainly helping us keep our drive times pretty average. You can see Thomasville kind of hit or miss. Highway 84 getting a little stretch of red, dropping speeds around the teens, but then most of us staying in the green around Thomasville, so it doesn't look like too bad of a commute. Around Valdosta, very similar story, getting a little bit of yellows and reds as we are uh, nearing the 7 o'clock hour here. We can see our drive times looking pretty average about 13 minutes there up to Moody Air Force Base, which is what we saw at last check there. Maybe just one minute slower than average around the capital city. Maybe having some slick spots and some rainfall out there this morning. Of course, uh, some of that road work continuing again starting at 9 o'clock this morning. Haven't heard about any of that being postponed because of any weather conditions. We'll certainly keep you posted as we hear more details later on today. Otherwise, drive time's looking pretty average to start your Thursday morning. Time now to celebrate some birthdays, and first up, we have our celebrity, this actor turning 57 years old. Who is he? It is Kevin Sorbo, Hercules himself. Happy birthday to you. Celebrating here locally with us, John McCarroll, the old crew at Hotel Duval. Hope you have a wonderful day, John. Clifton Abraham III, big birthday wishes going out to you from all of your friends. Eric Walton, also celebrating as well. Omega Sci-Fi hopes you have a wonderful day. And birthday wishes this morning to Megan Jones, turning seven years old. Your dad, mom, and Miranda say they love you and hope you have a very special day. We want to celebrate your birthday or anniversary. Send us in all those details. Put a great picture on there if you'd like as well. Email it to us at WTXLBirthday at WTXL.TV and we will celebrate with you on the air. Time now for our Career Source Capital Region Hot Job of the Day. Today's hot job is an assistant manager. It's a full time position. Salary depends on experience. For the quick link to apply for this job through the EmployFlorida.com site, just check out the Sunrise section of our website, WTXL.TV. And don't forget, today is another WTXL Question Center. The Department of Health will be in our newsroom taking your calls and questions about flu season and getting prepared. It's all this evening during the news at 5, 5.30 and 6.
Well, time now for Tech Smart on this Thursday morning. There are a whole lot of ways that technology can help us become better organized, including flowchart. Joining me now is William McCluskey from Proper Channel. You created something pretty special that we can all really benefit from. Explain a little bit about your idea. Absolutely. Uh, basically, through my life, I've done a lot of different things. Every single time, it was the process that slowed me down the most. Uh, I would move in the wrong direction. I'd get misinformation. And so my big solution was, well, how do we fix this? There's literally thousands of people who've already gotten through these processes, getting your driver's license, applying to college. But we need to find a way to have all that experience help the people who are starting it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So all I did is find a feedback loop, sort of built a Wikipedia of workflows. So now I can follow the exact same steps those people who went before me did, and I don't have to move in the wrong direction anymore. So it kind of takes the hassle out of trying to Google what you're looking for, finding the correct results, making sure that it's updated, and making sure that it's the right time and for your state, and kind of getting a chance to interact with people who have done all the work for you. They've done the research, and maybe have done it themselves. Exactly, exactly. When you get official tested results, then you don't have to wade through that Google swamp. You know, you get millions of results and it's like, well, which one of these is actually mm -hmm. up to date? Which one of these is actually correct? Well, now you're getting a result that you know was made by someone who's actually gotten through it and has been successful. So how does this work? You go on the website and then what? What do we see? How do you interact with it? Absolutely. So there's really two sides. Either if you've already completed something, you're like, hey, this was a real struggle. I know other people want to know how to do it. Then all you have to do is click the create a new chart. Uh, up in the top, you click that, and it's a simple drag and drop tool. The whole idea is to remove the barriers of process. So if you have a goal in your life, we want to be as we want to make it as easy as possible to achieve that goal. Our tool can't be one of the barriers. Right. So real simple tool, real easy direction, real real great way to pull in all those resources you use. Uh, was it a YouTube video? Was it a website with an official form? You can bring all that together and link them together. So now people have a step-by-step -step guide of how to get how to get through it. Now, if you're on the other side, well, I want to figure out how to do something, then you just hop in and search. And you can sort all of our resorts by how successful they were. Oh, on okay. every single one of our charts, people can vote up or down, did this work for you? And this is something I have to imagine is constantly evolving and changing and getting new things added to it. What is your best advice for people out there who want to take advantage of it you know, right now and help see it grow? Absolutely, just hop right in. Uh, you can create your new account and start documenting all that information that you already know. It might be easy for you, but other people still might be struggling. You know, we all struggle with things that are new when we're at the bottom of the learning curve. All we have to do is share that information, and now everyone can perform like an expert. So we gotta make an account here. Are we talking about any cost? Oh no, no, absolutely free. Uh, <laughs> you know that's the whole point. Is you know let's let's let our communities share our information together, and when we do that, now all of us will receive the benefit. We're getting the best of both worlds. We're getting <laughs> the Google results that someone else searched for, and you're getting kind of that one-on-one -on -one interaction with people's own advice. What a great tool, and I think it's something that could really uh, save a lot of time for all of us. You see the contact information here on your screen so you can make your account and start searching now. And of course, we will link you on our website, WTXL.TV. William, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for we having me. We appreciate it. Stay with us. We're back in just two minutes. Perfect.
Just about 6.47 on the dot on this Thursday morning. we got some hometown weather photos to show yes. off. What are we looking at today? Max? Well, of course, it is the start of fall. That started yesterday at 4.21 in the morning. And let's get some signs of fall out oh, there. so pretty. Say it ain't so. We're talking about so some excited to see this. beautiful fall foliage. You usually don't see too many trees change, mm -mm. but you'll get it on a couple of those sort of token trees around the area that I you'll see this. start to change with the colors. And man, they look beautiful. This one coming in from Lake Talquin, Becky's Backyard. Looking very nice there. Uh, a nice looking sunset. Katie setting in this great shot from Tallahassee, not yesterday, but the day before, mm -hmm. uh, getting in on kind of a speckled sky. So that looks really nice what as well. What are these clouds called? Uh, these are more of an alto cumulus sort of. I love to quiz you. You gotta. Are you, gotta, you just making gotta, these gotta, things up? I could be. Who's gonna know? <laughs> I wouldn't but know. Uh, Google it. It's, it's kind of looks like the, it would kind of look like the same thing there. But it's kind of mid level clouds, and cumulus are the big puffy ones. Gotcha. But, yeah, uh, no shapes in this one. Yeah, so alto is kind of giving the sort of uniform, un uniformity to that. Uh, anyway, and we end things wow. over a little farther away from home. Oh, but man. Maria was saying, hey, I don't usually get to see some great sunrises uh, locally mm -hmm. uh, because she's never up for them. But, you know, she decided to wake up early. Of course, Eastern Seaboard, you get to the beautiful Atlantic Ocean out there. And that's a great sunrise that's shot. A great picture With a there. few of those seagulls out there, too, looking pretty, uh, pretty nice for sure. Send in all your pictures. Show us your signs of fall around the region. You can find me on Facebook, Saparis.max, or on Twitter at Max. Max Paris, just use the hashtag WTXL Sunrise. We love seeing your pictures and passing them along to our viewers. Again, what a great shot with a few of those leaves starting to change. Know, it makes me so excited. Yeah. Fall is here. Right around the corner. Officially. Uh, hey, yeah. and we're hoping for good weather this weekend. There's a great event in Gadsden County all about talking about healthy hearts and increasing the community's awareness. A live interview Sounds of everything good. we need to know coming up in just two minutes. And then be sure to join us on Second Cup. That is our exclusive online after show. What do we got today? today, we're looking at ways you can get the outside of your home mm -hmm. ready for fall. Maybe okay. if you don't have the leaf changing colors, we're going to take a look this morning at 7 only on WTXL.TV. Well, hard day. Anything in particular you guys wanted to be sure we mentioned or? Well, it is time to get heart healthy, and the Florida Department of Health wants to help get you there. The Healthiest Weight Florida Heart Day 5K is this weekend in Gaston County. Here with everything we need to know, we have Ron Terrius Clark and Annette Merchantson. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Really Good morning, looking though. forward to this event out in Gaston County this weekend. Going to be really important to get the community involved and having some fun as well. What's the whole idea behind this? Absolutely. Well, in honor of World Heart Day, um, each county will be celebrating Heart Awareness. This Saturday at Leisure Park in Gaston County, we will have a 5K walk run event. 
this is something, it's one thing to be like, okay, we're celebrating hard day. Maybe we're all wearing a certain color, or maybe we're talking about it more in person or on Facebook, but to actually take it to the next step, to get people involved, get them moving and mm -hmm. physically active. Why is that so key, really any day of the year, but especially in celebration of heart day? What we want to do is not just hand someone a pamphlet, what we want to do is have you come out and be more physically active. And we want to target all ages because heart disease affects both men and women. Absolutely. So what we want to do is encourage everyone to come out, be physically active. It's not just a run, we have a walk and run. So if you can't run the entire thing, you also can walk it. So we're encouraging people to come out and challenge each other. Um, men and women can challenge each other, men can challenge each other. But in conjunction with that, we also have our uh, WIT department is having a field day event where they're going to have champions come out and we're going to have some activities for the kids to encourage them to be physically active and decrease the amount of people who have childhood obesity. That is so important when you can get kids young and it just becomes part of their lifestyle and they don't think anything of it. They don't think, oh, I have to go work out right. or go to the gym. Yeah. It just becomes part of their every day and, and it's fun, fun for them. For them. Yeah. So how important is that so all those kids and really the whole family making this a family team effort out there so it's not doing a diet and not working out for one day. It becomes your lifestyle change. Well, last year heart disease was the number one killer. So we want to make sure that your lifestyle is conducive so that you don't have to have any of those things affect your life. So you want to make sure that you are walking, running, and have um, physical activity at least 30 minutes a day. This is something so important. So when we're heading out there on Saturday, what do we need to know? Do we need to register in advance? Can we just show up yes. and have some fun? Show up and have fun. <laughs> I'll be at the registration table. He'll be doing all the walking and running. <laughs> so meet me there at 9 o'clock. Yes, registration starts at 9. The walk will actually start at 10 o'clock. And we also have vendors uh, be out there giving out information. So you can come out and see, um, see different services that are offered without, throughout Gaston County. So we want to make it an uh, overall event, um, not just a walk around, a health fair, just more fun family and just everyone just come out and enjoy it. A little bit of everything. You're yes. getting the walk in there. You're putting the money where your mouth is. Absolutely. You're not just talking about exercise. You're actually going to be out there doing it. It is all coming up this Saturday. Registration starts at 9 o'clock until about noon. It is at Leisure Park in Quincy. Absolutely free to take part. You see a phone number there on your screen for more information. And we will, of course, link you on our website, WTXL.TV. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank we you. certainly appreciate it. We'll see you out there this weekend. Right. Hey, don't go away. We've got your final forecast when we come back.
It's 656 time to get you informed and out the door news happening from up and down Florida this morning. One man is dead and a pregnant woman injured after the two apparently stole a truck in Mariana, then opened fire on police. According to authorities, Shannon Murphy and Timothy Wagner went to discount cars. They asked to test drive a vehicle and never came back. Later that night, deputies pulled that truck over nearly five hours away in Volusia County. Authorities say Wagner began shooting. Deputies returned fire, killing him. Those deputies involved now on paid administrative leave. Charges have been dropped against the man accused of removing tattoos without a medical license. David Coppage was arrested in April after a woman said she went to him for a tattoo removal and later developed a severe skin infection. The health department accused Coppage of not having the proper license to perform those removal procedures, but his attorney says those documents were on file all along. Tallahassee City Commissioner is set to meet today to decide how to come up with additional funding needed for some new officers. A federal grant will give TPD funding for 15 officers. They'll be split between two community-oriented squads. But the grant does not cover the full costs of these positions and does require the city make up the difference. Tallahassee leaders have already committed to increasing the force next year by 18 new officers. Just about 6.58, what to wear weather on this Thursday morning. Max, what do we got? It is a gorgeous Thursday morning. It's a little different than yesterday, though. If you can handle a few of those showers, that'll be nice because we are getting in on some of those light showers around the region. Given another few minutes, we're going to be seeing more rainfall moving into the Tallahassee area. Light to moderate showers, that's pretty much it. They'll be with us for about 15 to 20 minutes and then scoot on by. You will see the slick roads, so make sure to take it easy out there as well. Uh, keep your headlights on and the windshield wipers, well, you'll have to give them a little bit of a workout as well. Toss the umbrella in the trunk because I think we'll see a few more of those bubble up showers throughout the course of your Thursday. Friday, a very similar setup as well. Maybe not as much as we're seeing today, but temperatures will be a very similar fashion with highs getting into the mid to upper 80s. A uh, similar setup for the weekend, but we actually bump up the moisture. There's a little tropical wave uh, towards Belize and towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah, it's very far away, but it is throwing tropical moisture our way heading into the end of the weekend and into next work week. So rain chances do spike. Even a few storms bubbling up throughout the course of your early work week there. Uh, around a 50 to 60% coverage can be expected. But because of all the clouds that'll be sticking around, along with a little bit more of that rainfall, temperatures back off only into the low and mid 80s for your highs. So yeah, it will be a little bit on the warm side today and tomorrow and even into the beginning of the weekend, but uh, nothing too out of the ordinary, even as we back the temps off into next week. Uh, pretty typical for this time of year as well. Yesterday, fun fact, we reached 90 degrees. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do that over the next seven days. And our average last 90 degree date is this upcoming Tuesday. And you can see no 90s First out there. First day of fall and we hit 90? Yeah. Come on, weather. A little bit of sunshine. Come on. And not too out of the ordinary, though. Uh, you know, temps were just slightly above average. A Cal couple of those slick spots out there, as Max was mentioning, that rainfall. But right now, we haven't had any local accidents being reported. Of course, as we are nearing now the time when people are heading off to work and school, certainly give yourself a couple of extra minutes. Keep those headlights on if your wipers are on. And just drive slow and take it easy for the conditions out there. Beep, beep. Hey, join us right now on Second Cup, WTXL.TV. We are looking at some porch decorations to get you in the fall spirit. We'll I'm take already a look right in the now. mood. WTXL.TV. Have a great day. Up only on WTXL.TV. I'm Kelly Bartoli. And I'm Max DeParis. Welcome to Friday Eve, as we like to say. It is also the first full day of right. fall. Yesterday at 421 in the morning, we ushered in the new season, and we're trying to get you into the fall spirit. Again, it's a very wonderful season. Oh, yes. uh, we start to see the temperatures back off, get in a more of that crisp air. Not quite yet, but we have some other tips Eventually. to get you into the fall spirit. Right. Well, and you even showed off a picture in hometown weather this morning during sunrise of mm -hmm. some leaves starting to change color. Yeah. So and again, not all the trees all change. We have plenty of evergreens down here. The live oaks kind of just dwindle away. But if we, the maples around the region uh, get in on some of that fall twinge. And uh, so you see a couple of those token trees out there for sure. I'm also going to share some of my knowledge of what Google taught me. Kelly yesterday. did some research yesterday. She was typing away. Google and we want to pass along this information because to you. Fall or autumn? It's like, is one better than the other? Yeah, Which like, one should we use? Where did they come from? Yeah. So I looked it up. Well, uh, back in the 13th century, this was actually called harvest. Because at the time you'd harvest Makes everything. Uh, then it became autumn. 
the, which is a word from the French. Which means harvest. Right, okay. um, in the 16th century. So we switched it to autumn then. Well, about 100 years later, so 17th century now, they started using fall, which is, I never consider this, as the poetic complement to spring. Spring. Spring and fall. Fall. Makes sense. Doesn't it make so much sense? Everything's all coming together. Right, right? fall more common here in America, but in British English they say autumn. So, I mean, you can proper. use them interchangeably. Right. It's all the same thing. Just saying. No one's going to hate you. My favorite season way. is harvest. <laughs> harvest. <laughs> then they might hate you. Yeah, then they'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> a little pretentious if you call this right. season harvest. Harvest. Yeah. Uh, we're taking a look to see some of the best <laughs> decorations outside because maybe if the leaves don't change, you have to do your own decorations. Mother Nature's not going to decorate for Kelly, you. Kelly, I know okay? you already got a lot of the look fall this, decorations. This looks harvesty. It does this look harvesty. This one looks kind of harvesty. I usually do more of like, I have a lot of Halloween stuff. That makes sense. So it's not Well, what all do you do after Halloween? Um, I have like three like pumpkins that are plain enough that don't have like a face on them, right. just like kind of an orangey pumpkin. Are you someone that carves Halloween pumpkins too? I usually do. I painted some last year. I painted it white and put um, uh, rhinestones. Can we please do that it. on the show? By the way, we, we didn't should. get to that last year. No, we didn't. But we should this we year. Should. Oh, this looks kind of like this looks like this looks semi bridal. -ish. Right, I can see that. See, like oh. all the pumpkins that they painted white. Yeah. And then it says fresh corn, and then the hello kind they of burlappy. Right. <laughs> they just dunked it in bleach. Yeah. You, actually, you can do that before you carve it. What does that do? It helps it from rotting, and like animals don't want to eat it then. It kind of makes sense. Right. Okay. Oh, this is you take like just a throw rug that you're going to have outside, mm -hmm. kind of as the welcome mat, instead of just buying one that says happy fall or something. You just do sponge painting. I would have done like colors instead of just white. Maybe they're keeping up the white theme because you can that's get well, you can get white gourds like that. Yeah, for that's sure. true. That is true. Mm -hmm. I always love like the crazy little gourds that are like the little miniature ones. Now, are, like crazy shapes. With these pillows, yeah. What if what if the trick and treat just got stolen and you just have ore? Ore. You just have ore left over. An right? ore pillow. You can glue it down onto your bench. There you go. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, that's something you have to be careful. I mean, you want to think the best of people. Treat but or trick. It's people. You can so. switch them up. Chalkboard paint. Oh, we love this. I love chalkboard paint. Oh, and some mums in and there? Yeah, they Beautiful. look like they like carved it like pretty wide at the top instead of just using it to like scoop your hand in there. I love this. I've never thought about this, using it like a potted plant. Yeah. And if you get a real pumpkin, it can actually feed off it as like a nutrient it's system It's going to be too. like science right there. To science. Si to science. It's, it's going to be right science. there. Yeah. Hey, Max, this is for you. Thank you. Are you going to make this for me? Mm -mm, I can try. Okay, try your best. This is burlap. At first I thought it was toilet paper. No, it looks like burlap. Um. So yeah, no. Well, I just kind of glanced up and saw like, how dare you, Kelly? Right. Yes. <laughs> so burlap, you know, that's kind of like fall. Har the M, I, it, it could match my M mug that I have right here. Very nice. Um, ooh, ooh, a little this eccentric. Is fancy. What here. is this called? These are topiaries. Topiaries. Usually, that's when it's like, um, like Edward Scissorhands when he cuts the, you know, and the, and the shapes the and the animals. Yes. I actually this have that with... saved on DVR. I will oh, watch that again. Nice. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Me that's either. a good Halloween one, though, right? I love this one. It's not a K though. No, I would make it a K. So all, all it looks like you do is you take a little bit of the glue, right. you put it on there, and then you just dump a bunch and of glitter on it. Dump a whole lot of glitter oh. on there. So you gotta just make sure you have I a good glue pattern on there. This is when you need to start saving your old newspapers and like the classified ads. Definitely. Because you need to cover mm -hmm. the whole surface area. Do you, well, do you like to cut pumpkins? I mean, that goo. I love that. That's the best part. That goo do you ever make the everywhere. you pop them in the oven? Oh, you have the pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. seeds. Mm -hmm. oh, well love. we'll save see, some we'll save some Democrats and we'll lay them down and make some pumpkins. Harvey's.
All right, a few of those isolated showers with us this morning, so call it on and off out there. That's pretty much it, and they're going to be brief and passing as we go throughout the course of the day. Heading into this afternoon, a very similar setup. A few of those scattered showers bubbling up throughout the course of the day. Seasonably warm, though, with numbers getting into the mid and upper 80s, and overnight will dip down into the upper 60s for your lows. Here's your seven-day forecast. Rain chances not going away. In fact, they go up heading into next work week.